And we have with us the attorney for defects, Mr. Skavonic, the case manager, Ms. Wilcox, the child's attorney guardian at Lada, Ms. Miller. The child is not a child. She's a young lady. Miranda is here. How are you, Miranda? I'm good. You look like one of those teenagers who doesn't like being up this early in the morning. I don't. <laughs> well, I, there are a lot of adults that don't like to get up early either. I'm going to let Mr. Skavonic give me a summary from uh, coming forward from the last time we reviewed the case, and then we'll talk to Ms. Wilcox and Miranda and maybe Ms. Miller, too, and ask any questions and find out if there's anything we need to be doing differently. Go ahead, Mr. Skavonic. So, Your Honor, we were last in court on this case on the 23rd of January of this year. At that time, the uh, court found that neither parent had made any significant progress on their uh, case plan. Actually, the mother is the only one that has a case plan. Mr. Eskew has never had one. We've never actually been able to serve the putative father. Um, the permanency plan at that time was concurrent plans of um, reunification and non-reunification, permanent guardianship. Um, the hope was that uh, Miranda and her aunt, former legal custodian Tabitha came. Um, we're working potentially towards um, a reunification, um, uh, which would have resulted in the guardianship being reestablished as to uh, Tabitha Kane, the aunt. Um, since that time, the department reports that as to the uh, mother, the department has not been able to get in touch with her uh, due to her not having a working phone number or a stable address. The father's uh, whereabouts remain unknown. Letters have been sent to his last known address in Fayetteville. Um, the department had previously tried to serve him at that address without success. Um, and Ms. Wilcox has also been reaching out to the mother, Ms. Kane, via her email address um, with no response. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> Neither parent has made any progress again the department has not found the father. The mother has not made any progress on her case plan since we were last in court. Um, and the uh, legal custodian, um, is, the former legal um, custodian, is no longer willing to be considered a placement resource for the child. Uh, she does have visitation with Miranda, along with Miranda having a sister that visits with, I mean, a sister that visits with her. Um, and those take place unsupervised with Ms. Tabitha Kane every month. And when the sister is in town, I think Ms. Wilcox, correct me if I'm wrong, you said she is with her husband in Texas in the military. And so she comes whenever she has the opportunity to come, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, the department has had some discussions with um Miranda's adult sister about being a possible placement, but that's not a, a very likely at this time because of the fact that they're um, a military family and don't know where their um, their duty station is. Um, they may be moved from Texas to Georgia or somewhere else, and it's just unknown at this time. Um, Miranda is currently placed in a family foster home with the Rollinses in Carroll County. Um, is doing well in that placement. She has an individual therapy um, weekly with Willowbrook during school. Um, the summer months are taking place virtually, so that should be starting back up here in person in the, in the near future because we've got school starting uh, here in August. Um, the service provider was changed in June. Um, Miranda uh, has expressed that she doesn't feel that she needs therapy. However, she has been uh, participating in the sessions and the, uh, the therapist, the new therapist that's been put in place in Miranda, <laughs> excuse me, are currently working on building rapport with one another. Um, Miranda is she prescribed, had, had hydroxyl in September of last year and a dental in October of last year. Uh, let's see what else. Miranda has continued to express that she does not wish to be adopted. Um, to the department. She is currently High school is in the 10th grade. Uh, she has an IEP and is going to again have tutoring to assist her in classes. Um, and 
Ms. Wilcox, I know we had talked about ILP services. I think you had said that um, Miranda was not participating in the ILP services that she had been notified for. So I just wanted to make the court aware of that. Um, and uh, maybe the court might want to address that with Miranda. Um, the department at this time, Your Honor, based on the fact that there is no one currently um, willing to assume permanent guardianship of the child and that Miranda has expressed her um, opposition to being adopted, that the permanency plan for Miranda at this point would be changed to another permanent planned living arrangement, emancipation. Um, Miranda just turned uh, 16, so she will be aging out in approximately two years. Is all that information relayed by your lawyer true and correct, Ms. Wilcox? Yes, sir. Anything you want to add? No, sir. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Wilcox about the report or about anything about uh, Miranda's uh, status with the agency? Judge, I was just going to inquire about the independent living and also about her being able to get her driver's license now that she's turned 16. I, I did talk to Ms. Wilcox about the driver's license issue last week. Um, I think she said the Rollinses are going to be working with Miranda to get a learner's permit and to start working towards her getting a driver's license classes started. Yes. I think she has to have the learner's permit before she can sit for a driver's license. Yeah. Well, she, oh, yeah, you did? She's great. Born, great. She's okay. going to work. She needs her license. Also, um, we will be scheduling her round table now. Um, we will be scheduling her round table for upcoming date. And what are you going to do at the round table? Her round table will be able to, um, she'll be able to speak with her ILS, get information on the independent living program, um, independent living skills. She'll be able to get information towards becoming um, independent. Um, also information about a mirror group and how it does it work um, while she's independent living um, while she is, a, now that she is, oh, I'm sorry, now that she is qualified for um, ILP, she will also get information as to um, the ILP benefits um, financially, what she needs to do upcoming and after she leave care. So she will be having round tables every six months. So we're in the process of scheduling her round table. Um, now, this will be her initial round table also. Well, what age is she supposed to be when she has her round table? Uh, six That's when she's been in care for six months and she's a 14 or older. 16. Okay. Yeah. So up to turn at 16. She could have had it, you know, the months coming up to 16. However, we are um, scheduling in the process of scheduling it now. When did y'all get custody of Miranda. We, wasn't, she, wasn't she in the aunt's custody for some time? Prior to coming in care, yes, sir. Okay. So she came into care in January of 22? Yes, sir. So she January was 14. She came in and there's a six months grace period, whatever. So um, she should have been in ILP services since July of 22. Yes, sir. She's qualified after six months, um, yeah. six months after turning 14, if she's in care. Are you saying she's refused the services? No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, it was, um, she had different placements and in and out of hospitals prior. Um, now she's stabilized, but we're having her um, first initial round table. Okay. Yes. Well, something Mr. Str Skavrotic said made it sound like she was not willing to participate in the services or some of the services. Maybe I misunderstood what he said. No, that's what I said. Maybe I misunderstood Ms. Wilcox. No, she I haven't participated in me. any workshops. Which is voluntary and she's chosen not to participate? Um, from my understanding, prior to this placement, um, um, I can check into if there were offered to her and her other placements. However, in this foster home placement, 
um, she hasn't participated in any ILP workshops, from my understanding. And I, and I should just remind the court, Your Honor, that this case was taken over by Ms. Wilcox recently for Ms. Godwin, who went out on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. So she was the yeah. previous case manager. All right. How do you like your foster home, Miranda? It's good. I like it. Okay. Where do you attend school? Okay. You like the school? It's okay. Okay. Uh, besides a driver's license, is there anything you need or think you need? In driving school. Okay. Do they have driving schools there? Yeah. And most of the public schools quit teaching driver's ed years ago. I don't think they ever started back, did they? No, I mean, unless individual counties do it, it's not required anymore, I know. Um, do th does your school have a driver's ed program? No. Okay, so otherwise, so there are private companies that off, I know Taggart's has offices around Metro Atlanta that they, for a fee, they <laughs> give driver's license, uh, driver's training to young drivers. Does the agency help with that, Ms. Wilcox? Um, they can help find one. Uh, it can be a collaboration between the department, the ILS, and the placement. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe there was talks prior to me coming on as being the case manager between Ms. Gotwin, um, the ILS, and, and the placement as far as waiting till she was turned 16. Okay. Um, so... Once um, a place or a provider, driving provider is provided, that information will be given to um, the ILS. What did you do for your birthday last week? A lot. A lot? What did you tell me? Tell me some of what you did. Um, I had what, a big party at my church and then I went to Six Flags and like a little photo place. To take oh, wow. Did you ride all those scary rides? Yes. Uh, not for me anymore. I'm too old. Keep up with your schoolwork when school starts back and don't be afraid to ask for help. They said you've got an ILP, and so the school should be providing you some assistance, but you can be respectful but persistent that, look, I need my help. I need a tutor in this subject, whatever. OK, be an advocate for yourself because um, you need your diploma. What grade will you be in? Yeah. Now, this independent living, have they had some um, either? I know a lot of it during COVID was virtual and it may still be virtual. Um, have you just chosen not to go to some of the programs? No, I'd go to them. You do go to them days. when you know about them? Yes. OK, well, listen. Every, sometimes it may be something, oh, gosh, I already know about this. I've already seen this before. But there's some good stuff that will help you. Um, you know, whether you are in foster care or whether you're living with a parent or whomever, when you turn 18 in Georgia, you're an adult. That doesn't mean very few people that, that turn 18 have I ever met that were ready to go out and do it all on their own. So I hope you will. You know, you have the option of staying with the agency um, and they help you with living and expenses and uh, they'll help you get into technical college or college uh, and fund some of that. Because um, I suspect you're going to be like the, just about every foster kid I've dealt with in 37 years. When they hit the magical 18, they're still not ready to get out in the adult world and do it all that by themselves. They don't have a job, but they do. They don't have a job that pays enough to pay the rent. And so it takes a little while. Okay. So anything that you need us to do? Um, no. Besides the driver's license, and I'm asking Ms. Wilcox to get with the folks that she needs to get with to help make that. A, I don't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, but that it, the ball the, will get rolling so that you can take the classes um, and then stand for your test and your driving test and all that good stuff. The... Um, 
court finds that the department has made reasonable efforts. Does anybody contend there's any material portion of the case plan that has not been implemented? No, no sir. Any legally required services that haven't been provided that should have been? No, no sir. Now, are you asking me to switch her from the concurrent to just a straight APLA? Now that That's she's correct, still... Your Honor. APLA cannot be in a concurrent, so it has to be a strict APLA. Any objection? Ms. Miller? No, sir. What we're, what we're talking about, uh, Miranda, is your your permanency plan, the, the ultimate goal of what to do and how to help you was for you to possibly get guardianship with your aunt, which apparently that's not going to happen. And is that a mutual thing with you and your aunt? Yes. Yeah, that you just just think it's not in your best interest to go live full time with her. And she may, I guess she's of the same opinion, but is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what the APLA means uh, another permanency plan living arrangement, I think is what it stands for. Um, just means that you'll be in foster care and we'll do everything we can for you, but we won't be trying to find you an adoptive home which you've said you don't want to be adopted. And in Georgia, once you hit 14, you have you can refuse to be adopted. Uh, I, there's some question about whether the department's still so, supposed to be looking when you're 14, even when you tell them that you don't want it. But at 16, they don't have to look anymore. Okay? So is that okay with you? You know, I've had kids tell me uh, at some point in their life, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, it's too, it's too much of a roller coaster. And, um, but then they change their mind. They meet somebody that they really like. And I've had, you know, in Georgia, I don't know about other states, but you can be adopted as an adult. But uh, I mean, that's your business. That wouldn't be something we would assist you with because, but anyway, the point is if you change your mind, don't be embarrassed to say, look, I've met somebody that wants to adopt me and I want to be adopted. And we can, can help you, but we're not going to go out and, you know, they have ways of um, advertising, for lack of a better term, that we have a, a young lady who wants a permanent home and would like to be adopted. We're not going to be doing that, okay, unless you tell us that you've changed your mind, okay? So we're not going to, you know, we're going to provide you the best foster home we have, we can find, and you like where you are, so we hope you can stay there as long as you want. Any plans to change that placement right now, Ms. Wilcox? No, her placement has been very supportive. Um, they are Good. willing to support her for as long as needed. Good. That's great. So we're going to change it to this, which means we're just supporting you every way we can, but we're not going to be out looking for you to go back to mom or to go with your aunt in a guardianship or to go to some placement for a, a, a later adoption. Okay. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Because if, if you change your mind, tell Ms. Wilcox. Okay. Because we can come back and change that, but we, you know, we want to do what you want to do with it. Obviously we've got restrictions about what we have to do and can't do, but within that, we want you supported in what you've, have decided to do. Okay. So I'm going to change your case plan to the APLA. It won't change anything about your placement. It, it won't change anything. If there's any change, I don't know, Ms. Wilcox, is there any, pre, she won't notice any difference at all. No, sir. Okay. And um, I do want to encourage you. I, I've had some teenagers who said, eh, I don't want to do this ILP stuff. And I had to say it, but I had some kids, um, so this has been a number of years ago, whose foster parents um, wouldn't take them to the programs. This was back when you went to a meeting place and sometimes you went to the next town and they may still do some of those. And I found out that the foster parents weren't not only not encouraging them, but refusing to get them there. And so they couldn't get there. And they didn't really care whether they went or not, but I want you to go. And if there's a problem with you, if your foster parents are busy and they can't get you to something and you want to go to, you let Ms. Wilcox know, okay? 
I'm not trying to, I'm not suggesting that I'm not wanting to cause a rift between you and your foster parents. And I don't, I'm, it sounds like they're very supportive and they'll do anything they can for you. But if there's something that you need to get to and there's a problem, you need to let Ms. Wilcox know in time so she can try to handle it. Okay. Right. All right. Um, no, no progress from mom at all. Um, and we've already abandoned reunification because of that. Um, and she's over 14 and we've talked about services and please take advantage of those because you're going to be grown before you know it. And there, there's, those services will provide you insight and benefit right now before you grow, you know, in terms of living skills and, you know, how to manage money. Do you have a job? You don't have any money to manage right now, but you, you may, we have a lot of older foster kids who get um, part-time jobs. You know, if you're interested in that, you can talk to, Ms. Wilcox about it, but I don't want you to do something like that if it interferes with your schooling, okay? All right. I think we've talked about it. And visitation, you're not currently visiting with your mom at all. Is that right? Yes, sir. Is that okay? Does she ever call you? Yeah. Okay. Do you, if we find her, do you want us to set up a a way to talk to her or visit with her? You know, okay. If you change your mind about that, let me know. But uh, you are seeing your aunt and that, that visitation once a month and that's okay? Mm -hmm. Do you want to see her more often? No. Okay. And your sister is who's in Texas and maybe getting ready to go somewhere else. The military people tend to move around. Um, and you're going out there this summer? Before school starts? Mm. I, my note, I had a, a report that said. Um, right, her. She, just, she just she just was here visiting. Oh, so, she was here. Yeah, she just left. Oh, I thought it said she was going to go there to visit. Okay. Texas is even hotter than Georgia, so you probably don't want to go out there right now. All right. You can take an order that we've addressed the the issues for the review um is there anything we didn't cover that you anybody wants us to cover no sir do you have um somebody with you do you foster parent there's somebody that i saw an arm reach in a mother, yes, foster mother well thank you for so much for taking good care of miranda sounds yes. like she's happy which makes me happy it is our pleasure good it's good. Y'all look like you live out in the country. We do. Well, kind of. <laughs> I just see a lot of trees back behind where you're sitting. Yes. We're enjoying some, some morning weather before it's too hot. I don't think, from what I've heard, I haven't been to Carroll County but one time, and it was 100 years ago. But from what I hear, it's not as country as it used to be. It's, no, it's not. Growing it's growing rapidly. Way. Yeah. <laughs> That's where, where we live in Henry County. We've done the same thing. Yeah. All right. We well, all take care. Thanks for taking care of Miranda and um, supporting her. And I'm glad to hear she's doing so well. Yes, sir. Your Honor, we did have one quick question. Sure. Um, she had been uh, being drug tested since March 30th. And we were just trying to see how long that would continue or what, you know, what the rules are on that. I think the the hair, the hair test is extremely um traumatic for her i don't the the oral and urine is is not much of a problem for her but she gets very upset when they do the hair test she's had two now and has been testing negative for some time so just trying to see what the courts uh is she, a, is she with um djj or, or probation no I mean, your honor there was an issue a while back and i that may have i think that prompted the periodic drug screens, but I, um, do we have a need to continue those, Ms. Wilcox? No, Your Honor, she's been tested negative since I've been the case manager. So and do you plan to stop she's them? She's been in this placement, she's been tested negative. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you plan to stop the testing? We can stop it, yes. At, the, okay. at this time, we have no concerns about her um, okay. smoking. Okay. 
Well, Miranda, um, you read a lot of things and hear a lot of things in the news about uh, when you say smoking, I assume you're talking about smoking marijuana, Ms. Wilcox. And um, it is still illegal. And I know you read and hear about uh, there are several, two or three states that have made it legal. And um, there are very limited use and legal use in Georgia for med medicinal purposes, people that are sick and need it uh, and need the benefit of it. But one reason it's still illegal is, and especially for kids, uh, young people, is, you know, you're, um, you think of yourself as a young budding adult, and you are, but your brain will not fully mature, to the experts say, till around age 25. And th there's growing concern about young people regularly using marijuana. They don't know what long-term effect it has on your body, on your brain. And um, now that it is legal in some states and it's being, um, they're not hiding out in the, in the woods illegally growing it. They're, they're growing it and they're, they're um, I don't know the word <laughs> I'm trying to get, but they're growing it to be more potent because people will pay more money for it if they know that it's get has a more powerful effect on them than the old kind or the, you know, so that stuff is out there and uh, they don't know what effect that has on young people or older people for that matter uh, in terms of any physical damage or whatever. So I, I know people find it um, for lack of a better term, they grown folks and young folks sometimes use it as a crutch. It's a, it's a feel good, um, it, you know, it gives you an ability to kind of forget about the problems and kind of relax and unwind. But, you know, if you have a need to relax and unwind, like she, Ms. Wilcox said, you, um, didn't think you needed therapy. Um, you know, most, a lot of people use marijuana as a form of therapy. And if you need, if you feel the need to continue to use marijuana, maybe the therapy with your therapist uh, would lead you in the direction of getting some relief. I'm not saying it's necessarily a substitute, but it's the beginning to find out. And there are some legal medications that can help you if you have anxiety. And, and I think you mentioned you might be taking some pill for anxiety and being able to sleep at night. So um, just... Um, I don't want you to unwittingly because the, the, you know, they don't tend to talk much about the potential harms or talk about the feel good stuff and it entices young people to do it, but um, try your best to stay away from it. Okay. Yes, um, they, you know, you're in their temporary custody. So I'm asking them to discontinue that as long as you, um, have gained and, and maintained their trust in you that that's not an issue. And the reason it would, could be an issue is, you know, I think some of the problems that you'd had way back in the past. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're happy and um, you take care of yourself. I'll give you a date to come back and see me on January the 22nd at eight o'clock and we'll do it on zoom unless you want to fight. Atlanta traffic to get down here to Henry County. Would you rather do it on Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're still using Zoom for a lot of these cases because we get people kind of scattered out and it works better for everybody. If you ever decide you want to come see us in person, do you remember coming? Well, you may you have it. Your case started it during COVID, so you wouldn't have. I used to have candy to give out. I still have some candy, but it's left over from before COVID. So I can't make any guarantees about it may be a little um, dated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Take your hands down. Um, well, who wants to tell me where we are in the, when I was here in June, mom was 
making arrangements to, to find a, a larger place to live. And um, kids were spending time with mom. Um, so where are we? A little bit brief. Go first. Um, yeah, so I do have a lease signed for a move in date. Um, I did sign the lease or change the date because it was originally this Friday, but I'm being cheap. I didn't want to pay the prorated rent for four days or three days, so I changed it to the first. So I could just pay one month's full rent for August. Um, I do have a copy of the lease with everybody's name on it. Um, as far as the move in date, um, I do. Well, I don't want them to go to the school because after I talked to Braylon's probation officer, he told me that the school that they're going to, which is Luella, would, is not a great school. Um, he said that there's a lot of fights going on. So I was trying to reach out to Henry County um, board so I could do school choice so they can go to a different school outside of Luella. Um, but I haven't, no one has gotten back to me yet. But I did see that the date for school choice ended in February. So they will have to attend Luella for a semester if I want to change them to a different school. Did you um, rent an apartment in Henry County? No, it's a rental. It's a rental house in Henry. Oh, it's County. a house. Okay, but mm -hmm. it, but is it Henry County? Because I thought you lived in Rockdale. No, somewhere. You did it. You lived in either Covington or Rockdale at one time, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. But it's in Henry County. It is off of <coughs> Point over by the Academy. Okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that area. Yeah, I know where uh, well, I, Kenny Academy. I know where the Academy Sports is, if that's what you're talking about. Yes. So that's yes, that's where it is. That's where it's okay. located. Over in that area. All right. So I had to get something that was cost effective, if mm -hmm. that's the word. Um okay. All the other places that I was looking at were over two thousand just for a three bedroom. Yeah, but I heard somebody the house I have now is four bedroom. Okay, is it furnished? Mm, just their beds. I do have furniture coming, but it's not until later. So I have everything set up. They have their beds coming from their grandparents' house and their um, dresses and stuff. Okay. So we're, the the move in date is August first. Yes. So I would have to come and pack them up over the weekend, so everything could be set to go on the first. I, I would and think those young men could pack some of their stuff themselves, couldn't they? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they will. That's the struggle. Yeah, uh, they'll be willing to do that. They've been, um, they've expressed an interest in doing this. Is that still what you guys want to do? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. No, about you, Brady. Yes, yeah, I want to talk about the school. I think y'all just woke up. They did, they did, they just woke up with Braylon. And now his brother's in high school. Now they both want to both be in high school this year. Um, I have a coach that, uh, like a mentor to Braylon. He's at Eagles Landing High School. And I've been trying to get Braylon there. He's on IEP. But I've been trying to get him there so that he could, you know, have the support. Because there's no support at Union Grove. It's, it's no support. Because they're upset with him about all the things he's done at the middle school and the feeder school, which he's not doing anymore. But it seems as if they're not forgiving him and giving him a fresh start. Well, I thought so mom I said she, I saw, I thought she said they were in the zone to go to Luella, not you. They, they, they are, they are. But, but I, I just, I don't, but I I'm, just I felt like Braylon would be better I, if he could get in the school at, at Eagles Landing with his coach. That was his red coach. Football. Sure. And that's what I was trying to do with school choice. School choice. To get them into I, I don't have school. any control yeah. over. I can't tell the school system where to let him go to school. So yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying. 
But that's that's just a struggle we have right yeah. now for the school. Well, even if they had to stay here, Union Grove would still not be a, a match for them. Yeah, that's well, maybe a, a, a fresh start at a new school where he doesn't have a history. That maybe that will be a good thing for him if he takes yeah. it the right. You know, and if he's his poor decision making early on, he's cured that and he's doing uh, well, then he he should earn their respect and he shouldn't have any problem. And I, I, I mean, I've been hearing a fair amount about fights at most all the schools. I don't know that any yeah, is tuned <laughs> to fighting. Uh, it's something about the maybe the water supply. I'm not sure, but there seems to be a lot of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. So I'm just gonna try to see if I can do that. Uh, either landing, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on. It, but if it doesn't work, you know, then I will have to go on to develop. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think they won't provide transportation to Eagles Landing, will they? They he has to have his own transportation if he's, he's allowed on to the make that choice. He's on the IEP. They will bus him. They will bus you on the IEP. Well, I and I think that's five you, those four. If you were selecting, if you were selecting a, an alternate school for choice, it wasn't in your district. I thought you had to provide, even if you had an IEP, you had to provide transportation. But anyway, anyway, you if you've checked it out and they tell you that, then that's great. But I was okay. going to say it might be a struggle for mom to if she has to provide the transportation right. to get a right. landing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it doesn't work, you have to go in their area. Brittany, where are you working? State Farm. <clears throat> You work in a, a sales office for you know people buying insurance. Or do you buy work in some it, claims processing office or what? No, I work. Yes, I work in the claims department um, of State Farm. So it's hybrid. It's mainly at home with I'm one week in the office, uh -huh. one week a month in the office. Okay, well, you need to hold on to that job. <laughs> you got the best of both worlds: a paycheck and get to stay at home and do the work. Yeah. I couldn't yes. do the work at home to save my life. Yes. I'd be doing everything but. So it <laughs> wouldn't work for me. But I'm glad it works for you. <laughs> yes. So it sounds like it's 90% finished. Yeah. Yeah. Just the physical move. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Guys, I strongly encourage you to, to participate in the packing. Because when you get, if you participate in the packing, then you know where your stuff is when you get it to the new house. And if you don't know where it is, you just, you're going to spend a lot of wasted energy digging through boxes. And uh, and you may find some stuff you don't want to take with you. And that would, I'm sure, yeah. everybody would be glad to lighten the load. So you need to participate. It's a, when it's a group effort, moving goes, it is never easy, but it goes by easier if you, everybody chips in. Organize. Yes. Yeah. No, you need even, to. even Granddaddy. Oh, not me. Granddaddy doesn't do Grand, it. Grand, granddaddy looks like the supervisor type. He knows how to tell people yep. how to do it. <laughs> and Granddaddy risks a lot. Granddaddy just, he takes his break. He doesn't do anything like Paul is doing a lot. We don't allow him to do all of that. No, because he, he's got some health issues. That's fine. Yes, yes. That's why. So they, they have an yeah. uncle. My, my son, I help him. My uncle, they, uncle was here yesterday. He comes every, every weekend. So they'll, they can, they'll help him out. Well, so when the move is complete, we're going to close this file. Um, yes. Does that work for you, Brittany? Yes. Okay. Young men, that works for you? Yes. Okay. That means you, grandma and grandpa will be grandpa and grandma, and 
you'll be living with mom and she's your custodian and you have you can visit with your grandparents whenever they can put up with you. No. Y'all, they've, been a, they've been a big part of your lives, so I know you, you're bonded with them. And you, you, but I don't think you need me to tell you when you can visit. But you, your mom and your grandparents can work all that out, and y'all probably get a say in it too. Yeah. Okay. I told them we would still support them. I would still support them. You know, to school. Sure. That's and they they used to that and they need it and that's no problem and mom will appreciate it too. Ms. Schrock, do you have anything? No, I'm in agreement with um with that plan. I know um I mean this is good news and I know the the boys have been, you know, anxious to move back in with mom for a while now and mom's been working on it. So um this is good that we finally gotten to this point. And I, you know, just to support that, I think it would be appropriate to close the file and i don't think that this family would need any further intervention from the court okay well y'all just write us write me a letter or write it to miss schrock and let us know that the move has been complete which sounds like it'll be um first of next week is august 1st um and then we will close the file and send you a copy of the notice closing it. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, y'all take care and stay out of the heat. I know. Well, we thank you so much. Thank yeah, you thank y'all. So y'all are doing all the work. Listen, fellas, um, sounds like you're going to be at a new school, so get off to a good start. And... Um, Make a good impression, and uh, good luck to you, both of you in high school, and um, things will go well. Okay. Yeah, we pray. All right. About five weeks ago, we'll conclude the hearing, and I think we wanted to make sure that the child that was coming back from the placement to um to dad to mom's. Um, that worked out. Um, we're on Zoom, and let's see who all we have. We have the uh, voluntary placement, Ms. Garcia, and her son, who's the punitive father of, uh, I still can't keep all these straight, Ellie. Um, Mom, Jennifer Cousins is here. Ronald Pritchett, the father of Brody, is there with her, I think, I hope. Um, the lawyer for defects, Mr. Skavonik, is here. The guardian a lot of attorney for the three kids, Ms. Schrock, is here. The case manager for defects, Ms. Maisha Robinson, is here. Um, and the attorney for the mother, Ms. Riddle, is here. Everybody's under oath. Uh, Mr. Skavonik, if you'll give me a summary of what's transpired over the last five plus weeks, and then we'll see what else we need to talk, who we need to talk to, and what other information we need. So if you'll recall, Your Honor, we were lost in court, as you indicated, back on uh, June 12th. After that hearing, Brody was returned back to the custody of Ms. Pritchett, uh, Ms. Cousins, excuse me. Um, and uh, the department reports that that placement uh, change or return of custody has gone very well. Um, there have not been any behavioral issues with Brody. Um, uh, the uh, children, the other two children are still with Ms. Garcia down in Miami. Um, the department is this time is asking that those children return back to the physical and legal custody of the mother. Um, she has completed um, all of her services with regards to substance abuse treatment. As to Ms. Cousins, um, her last drug screen looks like it was June 11th. Oh, excuse me, no, June 27th. I don't know why that one is. Um, but anyway, June 27th, she's had consistently negative drug screens uh, since the protective order was been implemented. Um, her last six screens were March 4th, March 14th, April 4th, May 4th, June 11th, and June 27th. And those are a combination, Your Honor, of urine and hair follicle screens. Um, her last hair follicle screen was actually back on May 4th, and that was also negative. Um, she has completed her ASM level one sessions with Macintosh Trail. Um, that um, 
The children and Ms. Cousins are currently engaged in family counseling with Ms. Hughes at Loving Helping Hands. Those are conducted virtually. Um, as to the fathers, Your Honor, Mr. Doss has been working and providing financial assistance. Uh, Mr. Sawyer has not met with the department, no provi not provided any financial support. And just kind of throw this out there as too as well. Mr. Uh, Sawyer's mother um, was a previous placement for these children and has filed a motion to intervene, which is currently pending before this court and set for a hearing next month. Uh, Mr. Pritchett is employed part time um, and I believe he resides in the home with Ms. Cousins and Brody. Uh, I think we had some discussions before that he has some health issues that are preventing him from uh, working more than part time at this time. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. The children are in therapy with Ms. Hughes virtually. Uh, the mother had been visiting with uh, the children in Miami, obviously with Brody. Uh, that, that child returned back to her custody, but she's had both virtual and phone contact. And I believe she's continued to go down uh, physically to visit as well. We had talked about that when we were here in June about her driving down or, or, or going down to Miami and uh, visiting with the children on a face-to-face -face basis. At this time, as I indicated, Your Honor, the department is asking that the court return uh, custody of the children back to Ms. Cousins um, and uh, that the protective order remain in place. Uh, 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 I didn't specifically ask Ms. Robinson this and Ms. Blackman is not on this, but uh, that the protective order remain in place that Ms. Uh, uh, cousins would still continue to be required to do drug screens while we have that protective order in place. The family counseling would continue to be um, in place. Um, so that would all uh, remain in place. And then we would ask the court for a 90 day review date, um, which at which point in time the department may ask to close out this protective order, assuming everything goes well at that point. All right. Ms. Robinson, is that information relayed by your lawyer true and correct? Yes, sir. Everything is true and correct. Anything you want to add? Um, just about the last drug screening. I know it said June 11th, but her her it was a typo. Her last drug screening was actually July 11th, and it was negative. Great. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Robinson? No, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Ms. Garcia, is what was reported your understanding of what's it's time to do? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You've enjoyed, and we sure appreciate your looking after these kids. Um, grandmas just do a, an inordinately fine job, usually. Yep. We appreciate yes, it, and I'm sure the kids do. Yes, Your Honor. It's been great having the girls, and Good. I'll miss them. Ms. Rock, do you have any objection to what's proposed? No, sir, not with the, um, you know, the PO in place that um, DFAX is proposing. And um, I don't anticipate this being a problem whatsoever um, because um, Ms. Garcia and the mother communicate very well together and have been working very well together. But I just want to ensure that um, Harper and Ellie have some continued contact with Ms. Garcia and, of course, Mr. Doss as well. But um, you know, video calls or whatever that they can work out. But like I said, they've worked very well together and I'm sure that they'll work that out between the two of them. Um, Ms. Cousins, you've done very well. And um, I want to commend you. Um, you did really well once before and backslid. And, um, you know, I'm glad um, this was able to appear to be resolved um, quicker than most of our cases. Uh, but I want to caution you that um, with the drugs issue, you know, you're one of those people that, you know, that's going to be a, a battle for you for probably the rest of your life. And uh, it just doesn't go away and you forget about it. Um which means you've got to remain vigilant. You've got to remain honest first and foremost to yourself. But listen, every time kids get disrupted in their routine 
and have to go stay. It doesn't matter whether they go have to go stay with a relative, which is good, better than going to a strange foster home, but it's still traumatic. And they don't need to keep going through this. And you know that. And I just want to make sure you understand that um, you've been very lucky to have family members who were able to step up to the plate and keep some some semblance of normalcy with you and still in the picture. But it's upsetting to kids to suddenly they're not in mom's house who's raised them and they're here. And when am I going home? Or am I ever going home? And sometimes their little minds get to going and uh, that's not healthy. OK, so, you know, the, the next time if something like this were to happen, Odds are you're not going to get to stay in the driver's seat in terms of saying, OK, they go to Ms. Garcia and we technically didn't remove them and put them in foster care because we don't like to do that. But if this if you fall off the wagon again, then you've got a problem that's more serious than. And it's going to take, you know, longer to prove yourself again. And I, yes, I don't, I'm not trying to be a naysayer. I, I'm tickled to pink that you've got this together but i thought you had it together the last time and you didn't um yes. and i know things come up and when you have those uh, i deal with people with mental health and substance abuse issues in in our mental health court and i see it every day with people struggling uh to overcome the urge and the and the cravings and people that have that uh, it's just they have to deal with it. If you, I hope that you're in some community support, NAAA or Celebrate Recovery. They've got a several really good groups that the, the people that I see in court in those programs rave about. Uh, there's one uh, down in Locust Grove or toward Locust, maybe it's past Locust Grove. Uh, Relevant is that the name of the church that's down there? Yeah. They have. Um, they have a big uh, either Celebrate Recovery or NAA program that's, and I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember when they meet, but they've got programs that meet most every day of the week. They've got, the Methodist Church has had one forever right here downtown that meets, used to meet at lunch. I, I don't know when they meet now. Um, and there are even some that go online. Most people tell me they don't like them. They're not as helpful to them online as they are in person. But um and that doesn't mean you need to, you've got to still do these counseling and therapy sessions that DFAC still wants you to do. But uh, I'm glad that this looks very positive. Thank so, you. Again, I, I wasn't trying to rain on the parade, but I just want you to understand that this isn't just about you. And you know that these kids, they come first. And um, when they get back, they don't want to leave again. Unless it's just to go on vacation to go visit grandma in Florida or some other family member. But um, okay. Yes, sir. All right. You Thank got you. Any questions about what's expected of you? Um, yes, uh, that would be nice. <laughs> well, you're expected to DFAC still gets to come check on things. DFAC still can demand a drug screen and they better drug continue to drug screen and you better continue to test negative. And yes. you need to um, be the um, um, participate in those counseling sessions until the therapist says you don't you and the kids don't need it anymore and your individual therapy until you don't need it anymore. OK, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know, defects can come knock on the door. So we want to walk in and look in your refrigerator. Um, whatever. OK, OK. And take good care of those kids. And yes, don't, do not spoil them. Ms. Garcia has already done that for you. So don't. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I know she wouldn't do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to approve that proposed plan. And um, y'all, you know, they don't have to be back by five o'clock today. You, I mean, they, what's it, like 13 hours to Miami? What's the, how long a drive is it from here? Or maybe that's to Key West. I don't know. But. Um, I think we're going to try to meet halfway to, in Orlando. So that's going to be like a six and a half hour yeah, drive. Yeah, Orlando's about seven hours from here. Possibly. Yeah. Um, well, y'all just get it done here in the next couple of days. I'm not. You don't have to do it by sundown tonight, as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Just yes, do it sir. when it's convenient for both of you, as convenient as it can be. And... Um, are any of them young enough to still need 
the four year old may still well he's already up here so then uh, do the other two have to use uh, seats car seats or anything in the car yes sir do y'all have both both of you have car seats yes sir okay good all right anything further no, just the review date your honor the review date is October 30th, 2023 at nine o'clock on Zoom. Ms. Garcia, you may have gotten notice about there's, I, we set a hearing on the, um, the I can't remember her name, whoever, the intervening grandmother that asked for visitation. Um, yes. You, you're welcome to attend, but you don't need to attend because you're, you know, I know you're still grandma, but you're not the physical placement anymore. So uh, I think they would have sent you a copy of that notice. Yes, they did, Your Honor. It's sometime in August. You're not going to be penalized if you don't show up. If you want to show up, you can. Okay. Thank you. And um, I, I need the rest of them. I mean, I need mom and um, Mr. Pritchett and the rest of these folks. Okay. Y'all okay. take care. Thank you. Uh, if everything goes well with mom and the kids. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Thank y'all. Thank you. Uh, thank, you Honor. Take care. thank you, Your Honor. Thanks for working hard at it, Ms. Pritchett. I mean, <laughs> Ms. Cousins, keep, well. up, keep it up. Thank you. Be vigilant. You got a long life ahead of you. Keep, Thank keep you. working. Take care.